it's been one of those fucking nights where every fucking button I push wants to fucking be uppity with me and shit. I hate it when the buttons get uppity. I hate it when the buttons get uppity. Some bullshit right there. No kidding. Well, you know, it could be because the world is supposed to end in about a month. Again? Yeah. The, yeah. On I think they're saying September 25th, the Large Hadron Collider is going to summon the Antichrist. Oh. And bring about the end of all things. Is it just me or is the... I don't know how it's going to, like, apparently it's going to open a portal to another dimension. And it'll kind of be like the mist and the Antichrist will come through that rift in that dimensional rift and usher us into oblivion. That's a book. That's actually, I'm not kidding. That is the plot of The Rising. It's a zombie horror book. That. A zombie book that involves the Antichrist? That involves the Large Hadron c- Collider. That thing's fucked. I don't trust that thing. They, Do you know it was brought down temporarily before they fired it up? If this is not the hand of God going, no, don't touch. I don't know what it is. The whole thing had to be, the whole process of turning it on had to be stopped because a bird flying overhead dropped a piece of bread that landed in a critical fan. <laughs> And they had to stop the whole thing. If that's not God Almighty just being like, no, you don't talk. No, I don't know what is. And then there were rumors that there was this guy who was claiming he was a time traveler from the future that came to stop us from turning on the Large Hadron Collider. I don't really remember what happened with that dude. Like he just kind of disappeared. You know, is it is it just me or is it like Buffy with the apocalypses these days? There's, yeah, like Ragnarok was supposed to happen this past February. They they worked out like the super historians that studied super Norse mythology worked out that Ragnarok was supposed to be this past February. So that was pretty. Yeah, I want my money back. That's bullshit. I want my money back. We no Ragnarok. No Ragnarok. No Ragnarok. Now, unless, movie's not even coming out for a couple of years. Unless, you know, all of these, there is, of course, the possibility all of these apocalypses did, in fact, you know, lead up to happening. But some unknown hero somewhere True. is act, is actually out there or stopping apocalypse. Or happening in a parallel universe. Because did you see the thing I posted to the Facebook The Bernstein today? Bears thing? Yes, depending on how you think they spell Bernstein Bears... People think there's there's a theory, and I heard about this months ago on NPR, that there's this burgeoning internet theory that it's evidence of a parallel universe, that there was like a fringe event at some point that moved people around. And so people remember Berenstain Bears being spelled differently. There are people that swear Nelson Mandela died in prison. So maybe another universe has been annihilated a few times over, and we have like refugees or maybe people are just remembering shit wrong. Sure, if you want to take the completely boring route, <laughs> I guess. Okay, no, you're right. It's parallel universe. Must be. Must be, obviously. Uh, so... Did Dodger really have to warn the room not to ask about the kitty? Possibly. They, they love, they, people love fucking cats. I swear to God. We could just. It's true. Kitty's, Kitty's sleeping on Dan right now. Well, you just put the fucking cat on the show and we wouldn't even need to fucking be here. And the funny thing is she doesn't even do anything. Like she no. just. She's just. Like, it's cat. She, she just sits there and tries not to be on camera. But, you know, she's our baby. But, uh, yeah, she's asleep right now. So well, I think we might actually let her sleep. Well, it is time. Here we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide, interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here, but with something we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And we've got drones again. I I don't know. What, is this going to be like the drone decade, the decade where everybody, you know, it's yeah, like, so. it's like our pet rock is this yeah. these fucking drones. Well, the problem is you can now, as a consumer, just buy a thing at fucking Brookstone that can interfere with the flight plan of an airplane. Or, or... Did you do the intro? Yeah, I just did the intro. 
Okay. Yeah. Wow. Or maybe I fucked off to the other dimension for a minute. Or said drone can cause a fucking prison riot. <sighs> Drone drops drugs into Ohio prison yard. What? Inmate brawl ensues. Wow, I never even considered drones as a method of carrying contraband. It's not quite the drone delivery business model that Amazon is planning to offer, but a drone carrying heroin, marijuana, and tobacco dropped its payload over a prison yard crowded with inmates, causing a brief melee before authorities stamped out the brawl with pepper spray. Local media reported that the uh, melee at the Mansfield Correctional Institution began moments after the drone let loose the goods. At least nine inmates began fighting over the package while other inmates rushed toward the brawl. Um... Other inmates in the north and south recreation area began running in the general direction of the fight. Officers used pepper spray to stop them. All inmates were moved, and they were strip searched, run through the cell sensor, and clinic checked to make sure they didn't have any drugs on them. Okay. So do we know who did this? That's one of the fucked up things about drones. It's very hard to, to go yeah. back... Because it's it's a, like this radio. My brother-in-law got a like a toy drone for Christmas that he lost control of, and it disappeared over the neighborhood, and he never fucking saw it again. He had it for two hours. Goodbye. And now, not only did they not. Now, was this actually an attempt to smuggle something into the prison, or was this <laughs> deliberately just to fuck with people? Or was this a delivery gone wrong? Like have. Drug dealers gotten really fucking high tech. <laughs> you know what? I get my pizza delivered. Like, can you fucking seamless for heroin now? In, in. <laughs> I get my pizza delivered. In England, I wish they would bring that over here. They're starting to. I can get my groceries delivered. I would love to have my groceries delivered. do that delivered. here. Yeah, not everywhere. I can't find oh. a place here for groceries. Piss me when off. I lived alone, I did that. I hate the fucking grocery store. I, grocery I store was too. all peapod all the time. But, you know, this, now we have drug deliveries via drone. There's an app for that. Is that on the deep web? Oh, Midnight Storm. It's not delivery. It's DiDrono. Oh, really? <laughs> really? That's awful. That's That's awful. Like this is way more sophisticated than the than the scam red was running on Orange is the New Black. <laughs> was that the, yeah, that was through the, the the pipe. Which one was that? Well, first she had it coming in through the food delivery. Right. Then, then she, she had, she the, had pipe. the pipe. Yeah. There was a chicken in there somewhere. But uh um Yeah, see, the the drone thing weirds me out because just like consumers can buy things now and they're it's like three times in the last few weeks that New York airports have reported flights having to be diverted because fucking fucking drones. drones, consumer drones in the flight path. This is a thing that's a problem now. And their like, uh, California fucking terrorism taking down your plane. An idiot in his backyard in fucking Long Island can take down your plane. The California, they were having the wildfires and they were trying to get the helicopters in there to drop water and drones were in the airspace and they yeah. couldn't fly. I mean, it's kind of scary that this is just a thing you can go and buy at Costco and potentially kill 200 people because you didn't operate it responsibly. See, I'm, 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 part of me is wondering, was this like a delivery gone wrong or was someone just deliberately fucking with people? Because, you know, that this, would be sadistic shit. This is like something you get really high and go, hey, man, you know, it would be funny. You know, it'd be really funny. And the best part about it, it's a drone, so you can record the whole thing. But think about if this went right. Like, think about the drone drops the package. Whoever's intended to get the package gets it. You are now the fucking king of prison. Yeah. Like, had it worked, it would be kind of genius. Because nobody carried it in. But I mean, no. you'd have to get it back to your cell, and there's a lot of ifs that have to, there's a lot of variables that have to fall in line, but, but it's no. an idea with potential. It caused a fucking riot. Hooray! 
Oh. Speaking of some sh unlikely, unlikely shit, uh, San Francisco, this story came out, and this one just blows my mind. However, yeah, yeah, science for you right there. So a guy was almost killed this week. A miracle he fucking did not die from this. Urine corroded street lamp falls three stories, barely misses drive. Look at that fucking picture. What? One man. This is a thing that can happen. This is a thing that can happen. One man nearly lost his life while he was sitting at top of a street uh, stoplight in San Francisco on Monday. He's minding his own business when a lamp post took a three story plummet onto the hood of his car. The man was uninjured, but residents of the area now have growing concerns about the decaying light poles. City officials say the lamppost, which was already old, was damaged by urine and weighed down by an oversized banner. We believe there was some contribution of dog or human urine at the base of the pole. It's actually been an issue for us in the past. We encourage people and dogs to do their, play, uh, their business other places, like a popper restroom, one of our fire hydrants, which are strong and are made out of cast iron. What are people eating in San Francisco? <laughs> Soylent. It's, a, it's, a, it's the are, tech are boom. Are they so. eating fucking boric acid in San Francisco? Well, no, urine, uh, on the story, urine accelerates the corrosion of the metal base of street poles. So, you know, th this is why I've seen this on Tumblr. People have talked about, if you stop to think about it from an alien perspective, Humans are biologically terrifying. Yeah. Because... There's a thing that goes around on Tumblr that, like, what if oxygen slowly kills us? And someone was like, actually, scientifically, that's true. And they're like, maybe that's why aliens don't come here, because we're all the psychos that breathe the death gas. Not, not just that. We, we, when we bite, our bite not only oh, is... Yeah. Our bite is potentially lethal to another human being, because we all the bacteria in our mouths... Um, we, we, gross. we you can cut off one of our limbs and we can effectively continue to be to fight and kill um we're we're fucking this. here's what concerns me about this story though when we think about the last story we have developed consumer drones that can effectively deliver drugs to prison or take down a consumer or a passenger airplane we have not developed Street poles that can survive piss. <laughs> well, you gotta now. You gotta imagine two things. How you can't old? Get fucking Teflon street pile street poles. We have to wonder how old those those light posts are, and how many people and dogs have been pissing on them. It, it's this is one of those like math problems. Over trying to estimate how much I urine. I want to do that word problem over the years. Also, can you imagine this poor bastard driving the car? You're yeah. minding your own fucking business. You have done nothing wrong when all of a sudden a light pole crashes on the front. Man. On really windy days, I fucking worry about the street lights. Have you ever been like the street lights, the traffic lights that hang from the wires? Have yeah. A really yeah. fucking windy day and they're just doing this. <laughs> You're like. Those motherfuckers weigh a lot. I like, I, like I sit there like, oh my God, this is how I die. I mean, fucking traffic light to the cranium. I've set off a, a circuit breaker before in my house. You know, I've tripped a circuit breaker and I have three thoughts immediately. The first one is, oh God, I'm dead. The second one is, wow, I'm badass. The third one is, no, I'm an idiot. <laughs> and I can only imagine what it must have been like to have a light pole. That would have been not, that would have been past, oh God, I'm dead. That would have been like, Oh God, I'm dead in my pants. I need new ones. For, yeah. I'm, I need, I, I have shit my pants so hard. All of my pants have shit in them. Even the ones back home. That's how hard I shit my pants. I just don't understand why we can't pull out some Teflon paint. Like, we're a pretty fucking advanced society. And we're being undone by our own piss. <laughs> what was it? There was, um... One of the William Gibson novels, I think it's Idoru, features a nightclub that 
the whole place is coated with this special stuff that like so when people pee in the stairwell it like crystallizes and turns into art so like they're walking through this club and the whole place is covered with like stalactites stalagmites and shit made out of people's urine <clears throat> well they've actually in the real world they've developed a hydrophobic and half the other shit william gibson predicted came true so that's probably coming well they they've developed a hydrophobic paint yeah that i saw that that they're painting walls with in germany and the pee bounces back at you if you try and piss on a wall so we're getting there slowly. But like there's like the concept of Idoru was it was a virtual reality pop star and that exists now. So mm. the glow in the dark piss nightclub probably isn't far behind. You heard it here first. William Gibson is the prophet of our time. So we have another one from our wonderful series. It's not a pocket. Oh, no. No. <laughs> That's one of my least favorite series. You know, I'm going to be, I, I'm actually seriously thinking about doing this. I'm going to figure out how to do it. Have you ever seen those posters? Like all I learned, all I ever need to know I learned from Star Trek and all that shit. Yes. I'm going to do one for our show. That's just like all a I list. No, I learned from what the fuck is wrong with you. Yeah. And one of them is going to be, it's, it's not a pocket. Cause we it's have, not a pocket. We have categories now. Um, this next one comes to us from lovely Arizona. Not crazy at all. 19-year-old stashed heroin in her vagina during traffic stop. Two women and a man are facing drug charges after a deputy at the uh, Yavapai? Yavapai? Yavapai. I think I said that Yavapai? right. Yavapai? Yavapai County Sheriff's Office discovered heroin, some of which was hidden in the woman's vaginas during a traffic stop. It happened uh, early Monday morning. Deputy stopped a Chrysler PT Cruiser... Don't know why they needed to specify that for an I always wanted a PT cruiser. <laughs> Apropos of nothing. Uh, for an equipment violation, but soon suspected that the three people were simply were not simply on a road trip. Michael Torres, 29, was behind the wheel. The deputy later learned Torres was on parole for drug trafficking charges out of New Mexico. Torres passengers, Miranda Boladondo and Sarah Valencia, both 19, are from New Mexico as well. While conversing with the occupants, deputies noticed numerous signs of deception as the occupants of the vehicle appeared more nervous than the innocent motoring public. Not sure what, what that What does that means. mean? Well, apparently, <laughs> suspecting the trio was transporting drugs, deputy asked to search the vehicle. When she declined, the deputy walked his canine partner around the car. The dog alerted on the right side of the trunk area. The deputy searched the trunk and discovered more than one pound of heroin wrapped in condoms. Ah, uh, deputy learned that both women had secreted a quantity of heroin inside their private area, end quote, when he pulled them over. While, uh, this is the worst part. While Valencia was able to extract the heroin she hid in, Baladondo required oh, medical oh. intervention to safely remove the drug stash from her body. She lost it up there. Deputies found a total of 1.8 pounds of heroin. Here's the thing. Condoms break. Oh God, yes. It's not easy, but they do. Especially and when you're using them when from you're the not whole fucking frat boy trend a few years ago of jamming vodka up their ass. Those parts of you absorb things more effectively than your digestive tract, actually. Yeah. So had one of these condoms broken inside of these poor dumb girls' vaginas, they'd be dead from an overdose. Immediately. And, and, you know, you say condoms they break. They die of a fucking vaginal overdose. You say condoms. Literally a fucking overdose. You say condoms break. They normally mainly break when you're using them for things which are not sex. Yes, when you're using them in a way that they are not intended. They'll break like a motherfucker then. Like they fucking dictate what kind of lube you can use with a condom so it doesn't break it down. What do you think heroin's going to do to that thing? I, you know, I know you don't. All right, here's the thing. You're in a very bad situation. You're desperate. You don't want to go to jail, but you're going to go to jail, and they're going to find it anyway. Yeah. So why not just do it without jamming heroin? Don't make, don't make it require a cavity search and, and, and medical, medical invasive procedures. 
medical so, intervention. Had to reach up this poor girl's vagina with forceps. Carefully, lest yeah. she could fucking, because she had poison. She, yeah, it was like this. Up her vagina. It's like the worst. You can't just stick anything up there. It's like the worst it's episode sanitary. of. It was like the worst episode of Mission Impossible ever. Like, fine. Dun, dun, Use a cucumber dun, dun, as a dun, dun, dildo. Dun, Put dun, a dun. condom over it. You can't just jam anything up there. The world is full of bacteria and gross things that do not belong inside of you. Especially poison. Uh, well, next up, I you know, I've occasionally I hear these stories about judges who make these like weird sentences. Like I mean, or we had one a few years back, uh, like the judge sentenced a guy to wear a sign like I stole something on like stand on the highway. This one is, however, from Texas. And oh, my God, is this Texas? Because the get prosecuted for not having a gun. No. Good guess, but no. Judge orders Texas man to marry his girlfriend and write down Bible verses. What? A Texas man was sentenced to marry his 19-year-old girlfriend, write down Bible verses, and attend counseling by a judge as punishment for punching another man in the jaw. Court case stemmed from a February altercation between uh, Justin Bundy, 20, and the ex-partner of his girlfriend, Elizabeth Janes. He told the TV station to hit the man twice. During his sentences, Judge Randall Rogers told Bundy he would have to marry his girlfriend within 30 days as a condition of his probation. Bundy says Rogers gave him the option to sit behind bars for 15 days. Bundy asked if he could call his employers to tell them he was going to jail, but the judge declined. Bundy and Jane said they feared Bundy would lose his job, so they applied for their marriage license and scheduled a date for the Justice of the Peace. Attorney Blake Bailey told KLTV that forcing a couple to marry is illegal, and the sentence likely would have been struck down by a higher court. And what the fuck does this have to do with anything? Yes! Why the fuck did... Okay. Why are using marriage as a punishment? Yes! Fuck you. Why are we using marriage as a punishment for assault? Because what does that have to do with anything at all? Yes. Like, I, there, I have a lot of questions here. I mean, it, it, and writing down Bible verses. Does he have to, like, write them a hundred times on the chalkboard? Seriously. This is like, hello, paging separation of church and state. Separation of church well, and state. I mean, it's, can you? It's, te uh, it's Texas. Can you so, pick up the, the white on. courtesy phone? This is, you know, I. I don't think a court can mandate you to get married. This is a sitcom premise. Yeah, yeah. Reality show, at least. Justin Bundy was on his way to jail. The point is, we weren't going to get to have a nice wedding. I didn't even have an, a white dress. Not. This is an inappropriate abuse of judicial power. Seriously. This is fucking that would be my bigger complaint, not oh, but we're never going to have time to get the nice red velvet cake I wanted. No, we're being we're having our lives dictated to us by a state official. Yeah. Under threat For of jail. Reasons that make no sense. Like you punched a guy, you have to marry your girlfriend. What? Is is that and again it's like marriage your ex-boyfriend? Yes. Again that, like break it, you buy it? <laughs> because well no, then he'd have to marry the ex-boyfriend, and we know Texas ain't gonna go for that shit. Even though they kinda have to now. But I, I'm so confused. I'm so I'm just And this was obvious the, the one thing that's just this was also, not legal. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna be in a super red state that pushes traditional marriage, maybe you don't start pushing marriage as a punishment for crimes. And, and, ha, the judge had to know this was not legal. If he didn't, why is he a judge? That seems to be a requirement for being a judge in a court of law is knowing what is and what is not legal. I mean, you'd like to think. 
But at the same time, we're a country that has several TV shows where celebrity judges oversee small claims courses, cases, and we call it entertainment. Yeah. Which is not to say those judges are not legitimate, but that's a form of entertainment for us, watching people argue in front of a little old lady in a robe about dog poop on their lawn. Our legal system's a little messy. <sighs> Canada is just laughing at us. Dude, the whole world's laughing at us. We, we are Canada's punchline. We're the world's punchline. Well, not everything is American this week. Next one comes to us from China. This is one of those, oh, uh, what the fuck were you thinking? I, I don't, th this, this is, this is how the world is going to end. Something like this. I, I, I feel sure. Subway station swarmed with bees after man kicks open beehive. Around 1 p.m., a beehive containing over 100 bees was kicked open within Hangzhou's Jingling. Uh, Jingling? Who brings a beehive onto the subway? Two security officers, two station personnel, and one passenger suffered bee stings. None of the injuries were serious. A man carrying a microwave oven box was stopped by staff at the subway safety checkpoint. The staff unexpectedly discovered the box was full of bees and immediately detained the man, informing him he was unable to enter the subway. Undeterred, the man began to explain to subway staff that he was carrying the bees in order to do a business transaction, and that before he'd set off, he'd just cured the box of bees. He argued there would be no problem Subway staff was unable, per, unable to persuade the man and called for subway security. Soon after, uh, the man said Bach was firmly secured, there'd be no problem. To make his point, he said, it's secure, and if you don't trust me, I'll kick it and you'll see. And at that moment, he kicked the box of bees with his foot. The box of bees that was allegedly firmly secured fell down and over 100 bees flew into the air in an underground enclosed space yep if you're going to transport a whole beehive i understand if you don't have a car whatever take a fucking uber like don't get on the subway with a beehive that seems like common sense it is don't get in an underground enclosed trapped space with a beehive in a fucking cardboard box. In a microwave oven. Who says I've got a business transaction I must undertake with my bees? Don't worry, this, my, this cardboard box is totally secure. There's no way they're getting out of here. Pardon me, I must do some business with my bees. Well, I mean, he was probably selling the hive or something. Beekeeping is a growing hobby. But just to, to on the subway? Okay, I don't know. China probably doesn't have Uber, that's right. But there have to be other means of transportation besides- Man, if, I, if I was Uber and a guy said, I got a box full of bees, let's go. Fuck you! But there's gotta be a different way to transport your microwave box full of bees. <laughs> Jesus. Than to bring it on the fucking subway. I guarantee you at least one person on that subway is allergic to bee sting. And it's lucky they're not dead right now. Yeah. Now, you know, I see this happen and it, it hits my mind that someday someone is going to be, you know, just take some like radioactive material or some fucking doomsday virus and be like, eh, it'll be okay. I'll just put it in like this old Amazon box. <laughs> Hop on the train. It's cool. I got it in my backpack. It's cool, dude. Oh. Fucking... I got my VX gas and my Starbucks to go mug. Everything's cool. Yeah, because this is if if one human being can think this is a good idea, we are fucked as a species. Because it, because all it's going to take there's is... a lot of reasons we're fucked as a species. This is just an object demonstration. Yeah, we at least when you think about it, 
when you really like this is the shit that keeps me up at night because when you think about it with the fucking drones and everything we've done to the fucking planet and the stupid people we elect to office and people thinking it's cool to bring bees on the subway and the fact that we've rendered ourselves completely useless for antibiotics and the bacteria just keeps getting smarter like it's kind of amazing that the cockroaches haven't already taken over and and we're rejecting vaccines yeah we're not vaccinating it like it's kind of amazing that our stupid stupid fucking species continues to march on and yet we do and speaking of marching on our last story there were some injuries they're minor, thankfully. Everyone's alive, thank God. But, oh, we got video. We got video. This is horrific and magnificent. Let's bring the video up here. Here we go. So it's kind of like... This is from uh, the... All of, you're, you're driving along the highway one day when all of a sudden... Out of nowhere, you see that blurry bit there? Can't really see it right in front of the white car. There he goes. There he goes. Zoom. Okay. Zoom. What happened there was drug suspected a naked man seven car crash on I-71. A naked man ran for nearly a mile on a busy highway Wednesday evening after crashing into six cars with his truck. Is his mugshot taken while he's strapped to a fucking backboard? Looks like. Naked man Tracy Martin of Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Oh, wow. That's, that's appropriate. <laughs> that's a place? Chagrin Falls. Yes. And this guy is representing. We're moving, We're moving to Chagrin Falls. <laughs> Sped down the left-hand shoulder in his 1994 GMC pickup, sideswiped four cars, and rear-ended a fifth. Then, Trooper said, Martin's truck hit the median, flipped, and slammed into a sixth vehicle. After his truck start stopped, Martin got out of the wreckage and took off running. It took several officers, including an off-duty state trooper, to stop him. He had his hands in the air and was yelling explicit language, Trooper Kyle Dobrich said. He, he seemed very was, irate. Was he waving him like he just didn't know? <laughs> well, honestly, you know, if you've crashed your truck into six cars and flipped it, and you're naked, I imagine pretty much you'd be screaming fuck a lot. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fucking fuck, fuck. That's what else are you going to say at that point? Anybody have some pants? <laughs> Can I get your insurance information? There's a lot of other things you could say in that situation. Police say they didn't believe Martin had any clothes with him. None were found in the, clo the car and clothes found on the highway were too small to fit him. A witness who called Hamilton County, Hamilton County Dispatcher said she and several other people tailed the man as he jogged down the fast lane of the highway. Okay, no, no, honey, I know you're trying to help, but when there's a naked dude running down the highway screaming fuck, let that one go. Yeah. Just let it go. And like, were people offering him their own shirts or do these people keep spare clothes in the car in case of naked man on the high? Well, I shouldn't say that because I had an ex-boyfriend who pretty much lived. He had, he had enough clothes for like two weeks in the backseat of his car at all times. So you never know. Mother, just. <laughs> that is one hell of a morning commute, you got to say. How does this happen? Again, I wonder, where did it start? Because he clearly left his home, or wherever he started out, sans clothing. Dan <laughs> says, I think it was the invisible boy from the mystery men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm invisible. Can you see me? Yes. <laughs> Maybe put on some pants before starting any more traffic accidents today. Can you just imagine... You're, Where does it start? 
I, I would be, I, I'm picturing myself driving down the road, all of a sudden there's all these wrecked cars in the highway and a naked man running toward me. My first thought is, oh shit, zombie apocalypse has started. I think that's a lot of people's first thought now, and that frightens me. <laughs> Too many people are ready for the zombie apocalypse, and that worries me, because we're just going to start, like, the day there is an actual, legit, like, smallpox pox outbreak, because people are going to look kind of fucked up. We're going like, to see zombies shoot people in the head. People are just going to start getting shot and bludgeoned. I <laughs> We're our own undoing in so many ways. I, it's, it's this. Uh... Nash and Tara need to go to the naked people. Do you want us to start traveling the country interviewing naked rampage people? <laughs> Excuse I mean, me, I sir. That road. We could have like a podcast on NPR. Excuse me, sir. You appear to be naked and agitated. Can you tell me what you're doing today? I wonder if we could get that podcast funded like we just do like a this american life only it's like this naked life where we just travel around and collect the stories of naked people today on our podcast these naked people <laughs> we go around collecting stories stories of americans americans who are naked and crazy <laughs> stay with and possibly us possibly have things shoved in their nethers yeah this is another, this is another suddenly penis thing. Yeah. Penises where you don't need them. I guess the, the, the first thing. I bet we could make that fucking podcast work, man. We probably could. I'd have to work on my Ira Glass, but we probably could. I live three hours from the guy. I can go find his house and bother him. It's true. I can, I can just go up and knock on Ira. Ira! Ira, I got an idea! I mean, naked I'm people, gonna... Ira! To run around alone confronting naked crazy people that's just my personally i don't think that's a wise thing to do by myself but you know yeah i so the first thing we learned is if you're going to be going out under the influence pants just whatever before, happens before you do all the drugs put on pants put on pants pants is the first thing we've learned when you're transporting potentially hazardous or dangerous things perhaps you should get one better uh, tr uh, transportation equipment and two not private transport not public transportation yeah secure them and well, then travel private you're gonna start fucking apocalypse is what's gonna happen We've learned that getting married as a punishment is very illegal. That and it I mean, if it's legal, it's still pretty fucking inappropriate. Yeah. What the fuck, Texas? And what happened to let the punishment fit the crime? Like, you want to be creative? Okay, now this guy gets to punch you. We've learned it's not a pocket. Oh god, I've got to, I've got to pause because I just realized there's a picture. I'm going to show everybody. I don't want to see a picture of heroin shoved up some girl's vagina. No, not in it, but what they were shoved in, the condoms. They had a variety of festive colors. Hmm. Including a great big black one. I mean, might as well be fun. I, I guess. Maybe. So, yeah, we've learned yet again. Colored condoms always worried me a little bit, though, because what's to guarantee that that dye isn't going to, like, rub off or something? <laughs> I'm very particular about what goes in my vagina, okay? <laughs> I eat like crap, but I'm very fucking particular about what goes in my vagina. I think everyone needs to be, honestly. I think we should be a lot more particular about it. Ladies, it's not a pocket. Stop it. Stop putting... Mm -hmm. Do not put poison in your vagina. Why do I have to say this is a sentence that I have to say in context it makes sense? Please stop putting poison in your vagina. Oh, God. And firearms, too, while you're yeah. at it. We've learned a little chemistry this week. Unless you can learn to pull the trigger with your clit, which would be goddamn amazing. 
We've learned a little chemistry this week. Urine corrodes metal, so stop pissing on the streetlights. Yeah. You're you are killing our infrastructure. Or you're going in continents. Or you're going to straight up kill someone. Yeah. And finally, we've learned we got to do something about these drones, y'all. Cause. Cause yeah. Yeah. This shit's every. It's gonna be. Really you can just buy one. You can just go to fucking Costco and buy a drone. Yep. And deliver drugs to jail. One of these days, it's like it's gonna be everybody's gonna have one of these fucking things. Or Everyone. fuck up life for everybody at the airport. Well, like if you're at the airport, life is already kind of fucked up. Like technology is surpassing our societal constraints. Like the science is passing where we are prepared for it as a society. And it started with the internet, but now it's off the internet because you can just buy a drone and we're totally unprepared for that. And the Large Hadron Collider is going to summon the Antichrist in a month, so fuck it. Well, you know, at least we have a timetable, so. Yeah. Hey, maybe we can send a drone to record it. <laughs>